Welcome to the Werewolf Den, where we do a deep dive into the core concepts and principles behind White Wolf's Werewolf the Apocalypse. I'm Amelin. And I am Ryan. Welcome back, and to use an old cliche, last but not least, we are talking about, finally, Younger Brother. So, to get this conversation up and running, full bore, there is an issue that we do need to address, and this issue kind of is an old, problematic way that I know I was introduced to Younger Brother this way, Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of other people have more or less shared this experience. Perhaps not in these exact words, but the mentality of it. And this is first and foremost the concept that Younger Brother is as Magneto is to Professor X when it comes to Older Brother. Mm -hmm. So if Older Brother is Professor X, that means Younger Brother must be Magneto. And that's That's not right. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of times the books will portray older brother as, you know, willing to work with others and sort of assimilating into the Western Concordat with the other tribes, whereas younger brother is isolating and doing their own thing and not really playing well with others, so to speak. And yeah, I had a very similar sort of introduction to younger brother in that sense, that they're filled with anger and hatred And they're bearing old grudges that should have been buried long ago, and they won't bury the hatchet. And yeah, they're they're sort of... Both tribes are stereotyped in villainous ways, but Younger Brother gets the harder brunt of that stereotype, I think. I think your example is a very good one. Mm -hmm. A lot of people very much feel like they can look at Older Brother and be like, I can anglicize that notion of what older brother represents, so therefore I can look at ways to not look at them like villains, whereas the average white player can't do that with younger brother. And so one of two things happen. They either be, hopefully, like me and like the rest of you, go out and do some actual research into the plights of minority people and come to understand and hear how players of those minorities interpret Younger Brother. Or they do what many others do and just say, oh, they're Native American, get a Fenris, or something stupid like that. Yeah. One thing I will add to this is that the books really don't do much to help in this regard. At least with Older Brother, there are aspects of the tribe's identity I can find that don't relate to colonialism. So, you know, we talked about those in the previous episode, how there's their interactions with the worm and what they do. And yes, colonialism influenced that, but there's something there outside of colonialism. With Younger Brother, White Wolf did an awful job of giving you anything to work with except for colonialism. In the tribe book itself, There's about two pages of history before you run smack dab into European arrivals. And you can kind of tell they don't know really what to do with it. They didn't have anything in mind for this tribe outside of colonialism. And so, yeah, that's, I think, something that further emphasizes that point that you were just making. That, yeah, they're sort of these villains because the only thing that White Wolf had in mind when they were writing about this tribe was their victimhood. And so when you look at Younger Brother, everything relates to that victimhood and they're angry about it. And it leads to that impression that, yeah, they're just these hate-filled, angry werewolves. This isn't necessarily to say that colonialism is not a strong philosophical base to build their points off. In fact, I'm going to very much make the argument that it is. The problem is, is that White Wolf is very much written, once again, from that Western white perspective that does not understand the long-term impacts of colonialism, what that looks like, and what that looks like beyond just a standard primary school elementary education of the settlers came and things went bad. Mm -hmm. So to really kind of get into this, one of the things that I do actually recommend to people, if they want to learn about younger brother tribal philosophy this is one of those rare occasions where i'm going to tell you don't read any of the actual white wolf books on it Mm -hmm. 
Like, get the base tribal description from your core book, but don't read any of the extension books on it. Because it's kind of clear to me that White Wolf didn't know what to do with this tribe. Yeah. And that's the thing, because I'll get to a little bit more into this later, but I think they understood the concept of the colonialist plight, but weren't able to empathize and apply it properly with the Wendigo. And I'll get to why I feel this way a little bit later. But first, I think the best way then to start is going into, if you're not going to read the tribe book to learn about this tribe, what do you want to look into to learn about this tribe? And for me, I think the key, the core place to start with is the academic field that discusses something called climate racism or green colonialism. For anybody that's unfamiliar with this notion, it is basically how environmentalism is viewed through the eyes of colonized people. It's basically how poor environmental policy and bad environmentalist action impacts people of minority groups. And viewing Younger Brother through this lens gets back to another big thing that we want to do with this podcast, which is take those tribes and broaden them out. This does not take indigenous people away from the table. Not at all. In fact, they are the biggest contributors to this subject. Mm -hmm. But this does help then with, per se, if you want to have somebody from Africa that's Wendigo, using it through this lens and through this philosophy will allow you to do that. So the concept of green colonialism basically roots into the idea of a lot of modern environmental problems stem from the entitled machinations of systemic colonialism. Not the evil machinations of individuals, though there is definitely arguments for some of them. Columbus. But this is the notion of people will go in, strip mine an environment of its resources, despite the fact that there are already people utilizing and living within the lands that, that those resources come from. A modern day example of this that I hear about pretty frequently is actually something that is happening right now in Africa, which has to do with carbon offsetting. A lot of European, particularly Norwegian, corporations are trying to use carbon offsets to basically excuse their pollution because, oh, all the damage we're doing to the environment, we're buying carbon offsets to mend and heal that damage. The problem is, is that they're buying those carbon offsets in indigenous lands in Africa and buying those carbon offsets displaces native people in Africa and leaves them homeless, splits up families, and just wreaks havoc onto communities and cultures, all because a corporation doesn't want to change their internal policies. And so when you get into things such as the doctrine of discovery, if you want to go into older games where colonialism was legally justified because people were like, well, you're not utilizing the land in the way that we civilized white people, <laughs> we British people, say that the land could be properly cultivated and utilized. That means that you are doing it wrong and therefore we are justified in taking this land from you. Or by doing it with modern policies like the Norwegian carbon offsets that I've mentioned. Viewing these problems from those native people's perspectives gives you, I feel like, a better reason to kind of more theoretically understand Younger Brother. One thing that I like to do when trying to understand Younger Brother is to compare the tribe vis-a-vis -vis Older Brother. So when we talked about Older Brother, one of the things I mentioned was that I see this tribe as being one where colonialism and genocide have been something that you've struggled with but it hasn't completely impacted your life. That you found other things to sort of use as coping mechanisms, so like the Afrofuturist idea, that you've endured all of these hardships, but you're constructing something new. I see Younger Brother as, when confronted with that, the response isn't to sort of give ground 
and invent something new, it's to plant your feet and refuse to yield anything more. And I think that this is a common reaction when the stakes are much higher. Which is why I say that with Older Brother, it's, you know, it's something that you've been confronted with, but it hasn't hit you whole scale yet. And so with Younger Brother, just ramp that up a few more notches. And I think that's where you get a lot of these responses. This idea that we are standing at the precipice, and if we yield any more of our culture and our identity or our lands, then we will have nothing left. And I think that this helps me to get into the mindset of a member of Younger Brother. Younger Brother essentially deals with the idea of colonialism by understanding the notion that we're on the verge of extinction, much in the similar way that the Red Talons do. So, like, take, for example, the, the people who worked on the film Black Panther, right? This is something that is very informed about African cultures and customs, but... These are largely American citizens, right? African Americans are the people who worked on this film and made it what it was. And I see that as being a very older brother kind of response, where you've been enduring systemic racism and colonialism your entire life, and for those of all of the family members that have come before you that you've heard their stories about, your response is to sort of work in this way. Whereas I see younger brother as being members of like the Black Panther Party, the political organization, where you are fighting tooth and nail to preserve the lives of the people in your community, to uplift and improve their, their way of life, their means and their opportunities, things of that sort. Neither of these is a wrong response to colonialism and oppression. And that stems back to the notion that we were talking about before of how the books very much have instilled this notion of one of these tribes is dealing with colonialism, perhaps the quote unquote right way, and one of them's dealing with it the wrong way. And that's just simply not true. Mm -hmm. To further expand on that, one of the things that kind of bugs me about White Wolf's interpretation of Younger Brother is that they've become, or they're written as these xenophobic isolationist just everyone that's not a member of younger brother is bad and they view everything as the enemy and one of the things that just irks me so much is even in w20 when you're looking at sort of the the little bits and blurbs for you know tribal stereotypes like how do members of younger brother view the children of gaia it's this too little too late you're no good get out of our face and i'm i'm just like are you are, what like, huh? You're just... Everything that's not a member of your tribe is bad. Even older brother is viewed as an antagonist because they have yielded some of their culture. And I really, really hope that in W5 they change that. That, first off, do not tell me that within the history of the Children of Gaia they did nothing in the 1500s when colonialism was ramping up and all of this awful stuff was happening. Don't tell me that the children of Gaia were just sitting there with their thumbs up their butts. Like, oh, I don't see a problem with this. Because like, first, ah! first and foremost, the notion of peace at any cost is not a uniquely European idea. Yeah. So there's going to be children of Gaia amongst native people. Right. But, mm, but inevitably, like, one of the reasons why this is my second favorite tribe nowadays, it definitely was not originally my I kind of viewed it as, oh, they're like diet get a Fenris, I guess, or something like that, much like a lot of other people do. But seriously, I started listening to people who are not white and talking about how they felt like they could relate to the tribe mm -hmm. and talking about their interpretations of it. And then listening to those people led me to reading up and learning about climate racism and green colonialism that I mentioned before. And you suddenly realize that there is this deeply entrenched notion that goes far, far beyond the, um, not to make light of the Native American plight. The Native American plight is an exemplary example of it, really, of how terrible colonialism is. Mm -hmm. But 
it didn't start there. And the fact that if you bring in those minority voices to talk about these things, you can kind of come to realize that. And then you can start much more easily. If you want to run a Dark Ages game with Younger Brother in it, you don't have to be absolutely dependent on the notion of, well, shoot, I'm running a Dark Ages game, so I guess I can't have Younger and Older Brother here. No, you absolutely can. The plight of Younger Brother is the notion of lost culture, the notion of facing extinction, the notion of absolute oppression, either because of how you look or how you exercise your beliefs. Younger Brother is the tribe that's going to stand up and say, these small voices that have been ignored for so long, we will uplift them. We will take and protect them. Yeah, we'll secure we them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, it's just like with, with Older Brother, I, I want to see W5 maintain the place of Native Americans as like a place of pride within this tribe where they Absolutely. are, you know, they are the Irish to the Fianna. But yeah, I would I would like to see the tribe broadened out. Like the example you were just talking, I'm like, what about like an Iranian Zoroastrian in like the 600s uh, when their belief structure is like falling apart uh, and they're losing their culture and identity? Like mm, yeah. this is an opportunity to sort of broaden that out. But at the same time, I'm also mildly uncomfortable with that so because I if any tribe is going to remain rooted I feel like it's Younger Brother. So I have a general house rule when it comes to Younger Brother. If you are to be a member of Younger Brother, you need to be a member of a community that within the community's memory can remember a time of suffering under colonialism and genocide. And again, that still broadens it out. That includes African Americans. That includes Romani people. Like, that even includes... Hebrew people. Mm -hmm. So it's not purely this Native American thing. But if you want to learn about colonialism and just the effects of mass genocide, virtually nobody better than the Native Americans are going to be a better place to go to to learn about that mm -hmm. and the sadness and tragedy of that and just the terrible impact that that it has on the environment around you. So then, working from that, I mentioned earlier about how White Wolf, it feels like, understands this concept. They just didn't understand it when they were writing for Younger Brother. And that's because White Wolf actually did this notion twice. They did it with Older and Younger Brother, and they did it again with the Pharah. But I think more people recognized what was going on with the Pharah than with Older and Younger Brother. Mm -hmm. Because, again, that turned into that limitation of making the tribes about hereditary, making the tribes, like, focus in on a race or a specific nation or whatever. Yeah. And this is another reason, again, why I'm kind of like, bleh, on the Pharah, because the plight of the Pharah is the plight of younger, younger brother. brother. <laughs> it's just, oh, you have different special powers that no one else has. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. I mean, technically, so does Younger Brother. They have their tribal gifts that no one else... Like, can we just, oh, just play Younger Brother. <laughs> play Younger Brother. And this, I think, is also, like, if you want to incorporate this, this is another good opportunity to play with the notion of, like, what being Garu is to being Farah. Like, I mentioned a long time ago in the Wayback Machine of the Stargazer, <laughs> it feels like now... <laughs> episode time moves so, so slowly in 2020 <laughs> but i mentioned before about how i felt it was a bad idea that the stargazers left the nation mostly because it just to me it felt like just an excuse to sell books yeah. there was no real strong reason to do that with younger brother it feels like there's actually a strong reason that you could justify yeah them leaving leaving the nation Mm -hmm. And I feel like this would be a good place to play with Younger Brother and the Pharah, because Younger Brother and the Pharah, their plights are the same plights. So if anybody is going to have good relationships with them, honestly, it's probably going to be Younger Brother. Red Talons will have an interesting relationship with them, but the Pharah and Younger Brother are kind of kindred spirits in this sense. Yep. 
So that would be something that I would like to see White Wolf again address in W5, is if you're going to keep the Pharah, how are their relationships with Younger Brother? But I think with that, we've covered most of what we want to cover with Younger Brother. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, we've finally covered all the tribes. Yes, we are done with the tribes. Maybe someday we'll discuss the Lost Tribes, but... Frankly, I feel like there's more important things to discuss, mm -hmm. and the biggest one is going to be the Umbra and the spirits. Oh. That'll be a small episode, right? Oh, That'll absolutely. Super short. Yeah, it's... that's not going to balloon into a four-parter at all. Right. <laughs> Everything's in the Umbra. We could do that and we'll knock that out in 15 minutes flat. <laughs> I feel like probably a good place to start with the Umbra is we'll do, probably start with a general overview and then ramble until we eventually feel like, okay, we need to stop here before we talk your ear off for eight hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, looking forward to seeing you next time. Welcome to the Pentex Break Room. So... Based off of the latest transmission, it appears that our talkative young guru believe that they are done talking about the tribes. All the tribes. You've covered all the tribes. Hmm? Well, that is such a fair and unbiased approach you've taken. Really impressed. You've let nothing slip through the cracks here. Fully comprehensive review, folks. Absolutely. They did not miss a single one. Insert sarcasm here. Perfect coverage, and the lack of a cat this time I'm sure will hurt you reviews further. Thank you for joining us, and remember, there's more to talk about with the tribes.